this is not how I thought Mark and Amber would break up. But if I was Amber, I definitely would have broke up with Mark too after that. So we got a few things to get into this episode. We got Amber's life flashing before her eyes. Mark getting throttled by Anissa. Angstrom Levy moving in on Mark's mom. The immortal wanting to quit. And Donald and Rick kind of connecting in a sense. First things first, welcome back if you're returning. Or if you're new here, welcome as well. It's great to have you. Thanks for the constant support. I appreciate all of you. Now let's start things off with Amber and Mark. So obviously I ship Mark and Samantha and I felt like they would have a good bit in common compared to Mark and Amber. However, I was still curious to see how Mark and Amber would try to work things out. And it really seemed like they were on the right track to repairing their relationship. Mark made actual attempts to make sure things were covered as far as his superhero duties with the Guardians of the Globe. They were flying around together. They were going on dates. Everything seemed to be looking up for these two, at least until Anissa stepped in. This was a really chilling moment because you could see the hand she had on Amber's throat. You could see the fear in Amber's oh eyes. Way. It was completely unexpected. Amber was caught off guard. Mark was caught off guard. It caught me off guard. Anissa could have ended Amber in a split second if she wanted to, and Mark wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. If things went south, I don't think Mark would have been able to ever forgive himself if something happened to Amber right before him. Anyway, Anissa and Mark, they meet up in the sky because Mark realizes the situation he's in and he gets her to go up to the sky and away from Amber. He's able to console her for a little bit, but then he has to go up and meet her because we clearly see that Anissa was standing on business. They go up to the sky and Anissa tells Mark, all in all, he's failing the planet. And the more they continue to resist the Viltrumites, the more they're gonna continue to fail the planet and thousands will lose their lives. Of course, Mark doesn't see it that way and he will never see it that way. Now Cecil is listening in because Mark managed to contact Cecil before going up to the sky to meet Anissa and I really feel like Cecil came in clutch here. Now other times he kind of be getting on my nerves or I kind of be indifferent towards him but this time I really feel like Cecil came through. Only because it was clear that he was trying his best to defuse the situation, he was trying to think quick, to protect Mark, to protect everyone and I'm not quite sure who that scientist was he was talking to earlier. It's not ringing any bells, but it's clear that Cecil has something in the works at least to counter the Viltrumites. Meanwhile, during Mark's and Anissa's conversation, something comes up in a boat or a cruise over in a distance. Off of Cecil's guidance, Mark is able to convince Anissa to allow him to save the people that need help. Anissa follows with them. And this is the first moment we really see the difference in strength between Invincible and Anissa. What Mark was struggling to handle, Anissa handled in seconds. And personally, I think that made her a lot more scarier. After that, and after Anissa handles the event for Mark, she's like, hey, this should make things even more clear. Had I not been here, those humans you're so fond of they would have been gone. And once again, Anissa is relaying the importance of the Viltrumites taking over, what it would mean for Earth, what it would mean for the population. And she's basically like, hey, you need to do your duty and be who you're supposed to be. While Mark is still obviously not on board with that. That's just not who he is and that's not who he wants to be. So they're butting heads and things get physical and things turn south and Anissa completely throttles Mark. While Anissa is beating a snot out of Mark, Cecil and Donald, they're trying to go through any options they have in order to counter Anissa. But obviously they're coming up short. Now Cecil kind of tells Mark, hey, just tell Anissa what she wants to hear so she can leave. And Mark, being as stubborn as always, really sticking to his guns here, he's like, no, I'm not gonna do that. And I gotta say, I really liked Mark's resolve here because even though telling her what she wanted to hear would be the easy way out, Mark simply did not do it and even dared her to end him if that's what she wanted to do. Naturally, she didn't, she retreated because it wasn't in her orders to off Mark, or at least that's what she said. I will say at first I was kind of mad at Cecil for giving the immortal a hard time for not wanting to be a part of the team anymore. But after all this happened, I'm like, okay, I can kind of see where Cecil's coming from a little bit because they're in no position to be losing heroes. I mean, there's just so much going on. They still don't know about the sequids 
being on earth or whatever so that's something else they have to worry about they just don't know it yet something else i want to bring up while we're on the topic of cecil is donald and not only does he learn that he was choosing to let go of his memories but he was also able to help rick out when he really needed it and that's kind of what I wanted for the both of them. I mean, who knows? Maybe Donald will find some sort of purpose from this, some sort of purpose for helping others that are like him or others that are struggling through the same thing. But I feel like Rick isn't the only person that's gonna need support. Mark is gonna need a lot of support, especially given what he's been going through, this whole Anissa thing, he and Amber breaking up, and then we find out that Angstrom Levy has his mom and his little brother. Like, I know this sounds horrible, but Mark is really being put through the ringer here, and that's really good for writing wise, and that's really good for development. And seeing how Mark is gonna overcome all of these obstacles, if it's gonna make him a better person, if he's gonna fold or buckle, like the show is doing a really good job with everything so far and I'm loving it. I absolutely love characters going through hardships and seeing how they work past it and move around them. And like we said earlier, Mark has been put through a lot in this one episode, he lost Amber, he had this fight with Anissa. So I'm curious if him confronting Angstrom Levy next episode is kind of going to push him to his breaking point. Because I don't think we've seen Mark hit his breaking point at least in a while. I would be very surprised if Mark lost his mother Debbie here. But then again, I wouldn't because a lot of stuff has been going on this episode. Or actually with Invincible in general. But if they chose to go that route and Mark loses Debbie, that would hit him hard because Mark has already been going through a lot and Mark and Debbie, they just had a heart to heart earlier on the rooftop and that was a really heartfelt moment. So I definitely can't wait to see what's gonna happen with that. Something else I'm kind of looking forward to is what exactly is Alan planning? Because after we saw with Alan and Anissa, Alan is clearly stronger than Invincible right now and clearly capable of holding his own against a Viltrumite. So naturally, I'm very eager to see what Alan is up to, what's his game plan here. But all in all, that's pretty much what I have for this episode. Y'all let me know what y'all are thinking. What are your thoughts? Did y'all have a favorite moment y'all enjoyed about this episode? Was there something you didn't like? Be sure to let me know down below. As always, thank y'all for your support and thank y'all for tuning in. Sierra Nova is out.